Malkavians. Rubber, a royal ring piece to reassure a riled up moon rover with rapidly escalating repercussions if RV rips another river rafting romp to ribbons and ravioli. If you are wondering why I just spoke all of those words in your general direction, good! That sense of confusion is essentially how every single Malkavian feels every second of every day ever, whilst having lengthy literature based discussions with their underpants. For you see, if it has not already been made somewhat obvious, the Malkavians are not entirely there. Their symbol may be a cracked mirror, but in reality it would have been much more fitting if it was a small piece of bat poo or a nice loopy roller coaster. And yet, despite the fact that such a vast majority of them are debilitatingly crazy, they have not only survived all the way up until the modern nights as an organized clan, they are even considered a core fundament of the modern day Camarilla. And this is one of the reasons why I actually don't really like the Malkavians. And misunderstand me correctly here, I love the idea of a Malkavian. The idea of an insane vampire who gets flashes of brilliant insight due to his madness. And you kind of have to look through his dialogue to truly figure out the hints buried beneath layers and layers of cackling madness. And it can provide some very, very interesting plot points, like in Masquerade, for example, mind the spoilers, where as a Malkavian you instantly realise that the taxi driver is far more than he seems. But it's still delivered in a somewhat subtle-ish fashion that requires a certain degree of understanding of the universe to truly understand it. I adore that, It's I find it really interesting, and from a writing perspective it could be a possible goldmine. But at the same time, I also absolutely despise the idea that this collective of utterly cuckoo nonsense bag merchants can operate in any way, shape or form as a coherent entity, as a clan or as a unified force, and yet that is exactly what they do. In fact, they're even able to telepathically call upon one another and coordinate to a frightening degree almost telepathically. And at that point, their special abilities, their madness which provides insight, becomes more of a plot device than a really interesting crazy mechanic. Now, Malkavians done correctly should represent insanity like a vast bowl of differently dated biscuits. And at random intervals, God will daintily pick up one of these biscuits and instruct you to eat it. You may struggle, you can attempt to avoid the biscuit, but the biscuit is inevitable. Sometimes it will be a nice creamy biscuit, fresh and filled with milky delights. These are the ones that provide insight and clarity, and give you some kind of hint into the future. For example, the ability to make a leap of logic no one else can because they are hidebound by the rigid perception of reality. But at other times, it will be a stale biscuit, filled with soul-crushingly sour spunk, and topped with what, judging by the length and girth, can only be freshly plucked walrus pubes. These are the biscuits that place you in hilariously stupid circumstances, which are going to require entire plot points to eventually unravel. This would lend itself very well to a highly individualistic playstyle, with plot points written specifically for the Malkavians. This is what the first bloodlines did so very, very well, but it becomes really strange and silly when you delve into their history. So let's do just that, and I think you'll realise my point fairly soon enough. The Malkavians is one of the oldest clans around, which is remarkable in and of its own way, since they don't actually behave much like a clan, except when it's beneficial to the plot that they do so. You would think this would have made them extraordinarily easy targets for the other clans, but somehow they've always managed to kind of exist within vampire society without truly being targeted for one reason or another. And this is despite the fact that the Malkavians would pretty much piss everyone off, as they have no real allegiances, not even to their own clan, and that accursed insight means that they will occasionally, and really with frightening frequency, insert themselves into scenarios and plans made by the other clans and disrupt them in a most frustrating fashion. Indeed, it was to the point where the sire of the Malkavians, Malkab himself, was murdered by his fellow antediluvians after the great Biblical Flood, because, well, he was really annoying. 
He happened upon everybody else's secrets and was too crazy to understand when to hold on to them. Now, many Malkavians maintain that Malkav still exists in some way, shape or form within something they refer to as the Madness Network or the Cobweb. This is the psychic hive mind entity, well kind of-ish anyways, shared by all Malkavians. It is a form of information gathering network in which all manners of information is stored, the collective knowledge and wisdom of the entire clan, some would say, whilst others would claim that instead it is a means through which Malkave speaks to his children and imparts information and knowledge to them which there should be absolutely no real way for them to know, which certainly would explain some things, definitely. And presumably, Malkave's children were left alone because, well, their sire was dead. Surely that must have taken care of their organization, right? That must have removed them as a real threat, correct? And the Malkavians acted in that fashion. They did not belong really to a clan in the same line like the Ventru or the Bruiser or anybody else, really. They were far more individualistic. They went into both human and vampire society as seers and fortune tellers. And, well, in that day and age, it certainly makes sense. Even if only one out of 15 prophecies proves true, that one real peek into the future would undoubtedly have been considered extraordinarily valuable and also viewed as, well, sacred, really, in such an age of superstition. The ancient world really was the high point of Malkavians, as they were able to exist within the upper echelons of society while still being able to be utterly and completely cray cray. In fact, their crazy nature was their primary attribute and the reason why the other clans kept them around. But in addition to their madness and their ability to occasionally at least see into the future, they can also have a certain grip upon their sensibilities. A Malkavian is not necessarily always insane, and some of them can be in far more command of their faculties than others. Alcius, for example, the king of Syracuse, was a key player in the war between Rome and Carthage and was, by all accounts, apparently a fine diplomat, something you would not necessarily attribute to somebody who is constantly starch raving mad. But this swing between madness and, uh, well, non-madness was also a bit of a problem for the Malkavians, since many would recognize them as uh, manipulators, which they certainly were, but this also gave them a great deal of... Uh, blame, shall we say. As they continued to work their way into Roman society, they became advisors and seers to many prominent officials within the Roman Empire. And this led the Malkavians to be blamed for a lot of the more eccentric emperors. If something went wrong, the question was, why didn't the seer foresee it? And if the new emperor turned out to be a bit on the wacky side himself, could that possibly be the influence of the Malkavians? And so as the years went by, the Malkavians ended up being blamed for, well, basically everything. And that, unsurprisingly, eventually turned into a bit of a problem. And as Rome began to collapse, the power structure that had protected them from all of the blame and the uh, consequences, often in the form of vast quantities of angry people with pitchforks, the Malkavians were in for some hard times. They grew quite fond of the rising religion of Christianity, apparently even committing a certain act of grave robbery, which uh, is still of relevance today. But the Dark Ages were not at all kind to the Malkavians. Some of them still managed to maintain positions of relative power and importance, advisors, jesters, clergymen, such things, but by and large, the Malkavians fell from grace very quickly, and with the virtual complete breakdown of even the vague outlying of some kind of official clan organization that was created under Rome, the vast majority of Malkavians ended up as poor and often hunted wanderers. Their uh, 
eccentric behaviour, rarely gaining them many friends as they passed through various communities, and often garnered them fanatical followings of pitch and torch wielding peasants who wished to invite them to a local bonfire event. Life was hard for the Malkavians, exceptionally so, but somehow they survived the period, despite also gaining a newfound love and appreciation for the arts of literature and philosophy. And I really do mean despite. You would think that pouring their madness into something more productive like writing or philosophical studies would be good for the Malkavians, somewhere to take out their crazy energies. And I'm sure that would be true as well, but again this was the Dark Ages. Things tended to be rather orthodox during this particular period of human history, and the world was not ready for the inspired writings and philosophical thought of the Malkavians. Oh well, the world was ready, it was just not quite the reception that the Malkavians might have preferred. When they released a book, for example, the church would take a vested interest in gathering up every single copy of that work and then burning it, page by page, just to make a point, and then they would go out to find the author and deliver him to Jesus in the only way they knew how, by transforming him into smoke signals. Again, the mere fact that the Malkavians somehow survived the Dark Ages even as a lesser clan is nothing short of a miracle. But eventually, uh, the dawning age of enlightenment began to creep slowly across the land with the Victorian era. This was a period where people stopped thinking that the crazy Malkavian was possessed by Beelzebub and started instead to think that hmm, maybe, just maybe, there's just something wrong with his brain. And this newfound focus on insanity and the inner workings of the mind was obviously something the Malkavians were very, very interested in. Those who still maintained some semblance of uh, normality, or could at least fake a semblance of normality, often integrated themselves into the new fields of psychology and medicine as well, either as the psychologists or as the patient. Because many Malkavians found it particularly fascinating to simulate various types of insanity that they had accumulated over the years, displaying the symptoms, the effects, talking in certain fashions, or even just letting it all hang out there, going full au naturel crazy, and then studying the reactions, thoughts, and theories of the mortal psychologists. By doing this, both by studying and being studied, they developed a far greater understanding of their own curse, to the point that many of them began to view it as less of a curse and perhaps somewhat of a blessing. Because now they could express their thoughts, their ideas, their insanity in art, in works of fiction, in literature, in performance pieces, in theatre, in so, so, so many ways. And they could find an audience that were not only interested, but they were not going to drag the poor Malkavian off stage and to the nearest stake to have a spot of improvised barbecue. And so the presumably seven Malkavians that survived the Dark Age entered into well, the closest approximate the clan ever has had to a golden age, where their nonsensical behaviour could be passed off as performance pieces, or play acting, or other such nonsense that the plebeians would happily pay many, many, many shillings to see. But then, after this brief period of nicety, we entered into the modern nights with the formation of the Camarilla. And suddenly, despite being one of the founding clans of the Camarilla, all of the other vampire clans decided, hey, you remember the Valkavians? You know, those creepy little shits that claimed to see the future and made practical gags like stepping on our togas back in ancient Rome. Yeah, those little fuckfaces. They're still around, can you believe? Um, yeah, no, most of them had probably thought they'd all died out, and now, suddenly, they decided that the Malkavians were simply too dangerous to keep around, and were plotting to simply eradicate the little bastards. But then, the hand of God, or 
the hand of the plot point, whichever you prefer, reached down from the writer's hand and decided that a group of Malkavians would get together in what was known as the Great Prank. A nice little phone call was sent out over the Madness Network to six Malkavian Methuselahs. And they rang all of their friends who picked up the phone and was instructed to head to a city in Bohemia, where the gathering then cast a huge spell covering all of Europe, switching the abilities of the Malkavians in Europe from Dementation, the ability to share their madness with others, into Dominate, the ability to, well, dominate others. And this apparently saved the Malkavians, because it was the Dementation skill that everybody was truly afraid of, the Malkavians spreading their madness unchecked. It had been, you know, a thing previously, with clans claiming the Malkavians infected certain Roman emperors and other important persons throughout of history, but it seems a bit forced that the Malkavians were suddenly on the edge of extinction because of it, and that the Malkavians would simply just kind of happen across the solution. A solution, by the way, that none of them could explain how they made happen, is certainly a bad case of writing oneself into a corner-itis, and then doing whatever it takes to get oneself out of said corner. And due to the great prank, the Malkavians inside of the Camarilla are far more subdued. They're still a bit on the eccentric side, but nowhere near as crazy as the Malkavians of old, and nowhere near as crazy as the Malkavian anti-tribu. Essentially, the entirety of the Malkavian clan was split in the middle, between those who stayed within the Camarilla as dominate Malkavians, who eventually regained their powers later on, again due to a piece of shoddy writing, whilst the Malkavian anti-tribu are of course the ones primarily associated with the Sabbat, standing in opposition to the Camarilla. A rather twisted group, that one, that view themselves in a position of constant warfare. And they therefore use their madness not necessarily just as an aspect of their personality, but also as a weapon, honing it, focusing it, understanding it, and figuring out how to transmit it to others in ways that would be beneficial for their own goals. And of course, there is also a Muslim version of the Malkavians, because every clan needs a Muslim version, for some reason. And in the case of the Bayit Majun, I imagine they would not be particularly popular amongst the other Islamic groups either, since they are of the opinion that Muhammad was not the last prophet. He was a prophet amongst the living, but there would be another one coming from amongst their kind and they almost go so far as to consider themselves, each and every one of them, as prophets. At the very least, the insight they gain are hints from that prophet or prophecy, as if they are, as a clan, heralding the coming of the truly final prophet. An interpretation that I am sure makes them, as mentioned, very, very popular in the Islamic world. But far more interesting are the Anarchy. Now, these ones are Malkavians that more properly embrace their madness. They are of the opinion that yes, their clan truly are prophets, but they require a medium through which to predict the future. And that medium just happens to be the flesh, blood and entrails of other creatures. And clearly, there's something to it, as they are able to scry far more reliably and accurately than the Malkavians, although whether or not this has anything to do with their performance of a Harris Vex, or if it's simply just that the Malkavians require a focus to truly scry, well, that is open to interpretation, although of course the Anarchy would tell you quite uh, stridently that no, 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 the entrails of the bunny rabbit most definitively presage the coming of the end times. And so we find the Malkavians in the final night somewhat scattered, disunited, and still crazy, and 
I still don't know why precisely they're around except for a plot point that turns them into less of a threat to all of the other vampires who therefore decided to simply just leave them alone. Despite the fact that they apparently have the ability to change an entire clan's dominant feature. Oh yes, <laughs> why? Why would this be a problem? I'm sure the Malkavians will get on wonderfully for now. At least until another major religion takes place and they start getting burnt again. So, Malkavians. I... Ah, the Malkavians. It, you're... The Malkavians are the kind of characters that should not exist in an organised fashion. The Malkavians should not be presented as a clan or having a unified goal, but they are and they aren't. Basically, whenever the Malkavians get together to do something, it's always because of some mystifistical fuck you call from the great beyond that pulls them together and they do a thing for no other reason than because, well, you do that thing. This kind of leads credence to the idea that their sire is still in existence within the cobweb, but it also lends credence to the idea that it's just really shitty writing. <laughs> and the Malkavians shine when they are allowed to stand by themselves, when the insanity becomes their defining character trait, how they deal with it, how they interact with it, how they view the world in new and interesting ways. That is what makes Malkavians interesting. That's what makes them fun to play and why you should try them out, but it also makes them extraordinarily challenging to write, as you basically have to write an entirely second story for the Malkavians, something that Vampire Bloodlines did fairly well with the occasional derp, but even then, you need to really get across their insanity, and not just the insanity as well, because occasionally they will get a flash of brilliance that none of the other characters will have. And that brilliance is entirely incidental. It is due to the fact that they view the world in a different way. They are not as bound by a rigid interpretation of reality, and so they can view a puzzle and spot a solution that would be very difficult for somebody else to spot because the solution goes against their world view. I mean, a Malkavian should essentially have an ability to figure out a puzzle almost instantaneously and then give you a hint as to the solution of that puzzle inside of the dialogue. And the dialogue should still, however, look crazy. They are very difficult to get right, kind of like the Ventru in that fashion. The Ventru can be incredibly interesting if written correctly, and incredibly boring and two-bit villainy if written incorrectly. The Malkavians as well can be much like that. They could simply just be a crazy preacher that, due to writing, gets things correct, which is just boring, or they could be a really interesting multi-layered being, where there are various little pieces in the dialogue that hints at certain effects here and there that eventually come to be true, and inevitably so, partially perhaps even due to that information. For example, let's say that during a random piece of ranting and raving, your Malkavian suddenly breaks into a full song and dance about how pulling red levers is what's going to save life, how red levers is love, humanity, etc, etc. And then, like, two chapters later, in entirely incongruous fashion, you are in an area with several levers, one of which is red, <laughs> and pulling the red lever well, that'll basically solve the problem you have in front of you. That is how I would like to see Malkavians done. And also why I despise their writing, because their entire history is basically, oh yeah, during Rome they were really influential, but mainly because they were cray-cray. Then during the Middle Ages they were hunted basically to extermination, and yet they still lived to be a founding member of the Camarilla. And the other vampires didn't seem to mind, until eventually they go, hey, those guys are kind of annoying, aren't they? First and foremost, they're dangerous because they literally spread insanity, and secondly, they're also really, really, really frustrating, sticking their dirty little noses in all kinds of things they shouldn't know about, and decide to eradicate them before the Malkavians, through a piece of plot convenience, fix the problem and all of the other vampires just kind of shrug and get along with business. 
And yes, I know I'm somewhat oversimplifying here, but where does you break it down? That's basically what happened, which annoys me. Like, the Malkavians shouldn't be a clan. The Malkavians should not have the clan idea. They should be presented in a different fashion to the other clans. At least, that's how I would view them. Still, if they are written correctly, they would be a very, very interesting path to play as, which is why I'm very happy to see them included. And apparently, this is the last clan included in the base game of Borderlands 2, the last announcement, at least I've been told that, which is a little sad. I was hoping for Nosferatu or Tsimish or something a little bit, you know, a little bit crazy, because so far, they've all been kind of standards. The Malkavians are a nod towards the crazy, but, well, it is a, a resounding endorsement of the World of Darkness that the Malkavians are only cray-cray on the inside, whilst they are far more batty creatures hiding in the shadows of the World of Darkness. Anywho, until next time, I have been Arch, thank you all very much for listening, and I hope to see you all again soon. Until then, have a good day.